Texas has joined the ranks of several other states trying to change their voting laws. Many people say it's an effort to suppress the vote, particularly if you're a voter of color. Republican lawmakers in the Texas House passed a major election bill earlier today after debating with Democrats for hours. It now goes back to the Senate. Reforms are needed to the election laws of this state to ensure that fraud does not undermine the public confidence in the electoral process. It's going to disproportionately impact people of color. You have to understand the damage that you're causing. Texas is already rated as one of the hardest states to vote in. Republicans say the legislation would increase election security. Democrats argue it limits who can actually cast a ballot. The Texas bill comes as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a controversial bill into law yesterday. Opponents have filed multiple lawsuits to try to stop the Sunshine State's new voting restrictions. For more on all of this, let's bring in CBS News political reporter Adam Brewster. Hi, Adam. So tell us a little bit more about what this new proposed legislation in Texas actually does, and how does it compare to the Florida bill signed into law yesterday? So this is a bill that originated in the House and is now um, advancing through the, the, excuse me, originated in the Senate. It's going through the House and it's going to have to go back to the Senate now. Uh, and what it does is it puts in um, some criminal penalties um, for, you know, things throughout the election or voting process. Many of those uh, penalties were removed or softened last night uh, during an amendment process that kind of saw the bill go through um, some rather significant changes. Uh, there are protections uh, that the bill originally had um, for poll watchers and allows them to see certain activities and make sure that they are close enough to see stuff. Uh, some of the amendments last night did make it so that uh, poll watchers that are disruptive, it is easy enough uh, for election officials to remove them uh, from a site uh, or to call law enforcement on them and kind of soften some of the language about their rights to see certain things. Um, it also goes after uh, election clerks uh, and their ability to send unsolicited absentee ballot, to ballot requests. Uh, they would not be able to do that under this law. That's something um, that the clerk in Harris County, home to Houston, had pushed. Uh, Texas, though, does have very strict rules about who is allowed to vote by mail in that state. You have to be 65 or older, disabled, or otherwise out of the county, essentially, uh, in order to vote by mail. So it's not a no-excuse state. Um, the Florida bill, though, did, you know, went after some of the things that, uh, you know, aspects of voting and the way you can request and return your mail ballots. Um, there are limits on hours that drop boxes can be accessed, and, and it tightens the rules a little bit around where they can be placed. Uh, there are fines for election supervisors who don't follow that law. There's ID requirements for absentee ballot requests. They have to be, uh, if you want a mail ballot, you have to vote by or ask for one uh, every two years, every general election cycle, rather than every uh, four years, which you know you would have normally had two general election cycles. So they, they get a slightly different tactics um, in terms of what they, they go for. Uh, but at the end of the day, voting rights and, and civil rights groups have, have said that these are you know, bills that will make it harder for voters of color, for older voters, for disabled voters uh, to cast their ballots. Um, the Republican governors in those states have said this is just about keeping up, making sure that our systems continue to improve. Right. So I want to delve into a little bit more the question of why do this and why now? Because, as you know, former President Trump won Texas pretty handily in 2020. Texas still is a red state. It doesn't appear that the Republicans need a lot of help there. So what is this really about? Well, this is an issue that has just animated all aspects of the Republican Party. Uh, you know, we had polling uh, as recently as a couple of weeks ago that showed 70 percent of Republicans, you know, don't believe President Biden was legitimately elected. It's an issue that they say, well, our voters don't trust this. That begs the question, well, why do they not trust the outcome of the election? Uh, and then you can certainly look at many of the things that were said in the wake of the election by the former president and his allies. But Caitlin Huey Burns and I reported uh, back in March about how this has hit the national party level. This is hit the state parties, this has hit the local activists, that this is an issue that Republicans have really rallied around. And that was a time where the Republican Party was you know, a bit more fractured over how to handle the former president in the wake of uh, the attack at the Capitol on January 6th. And this election reform issue was something that they were all really able to rally around. And we've seen few lawmakers in these uh, states that have passed bills vote against or speak out against what the bills um, are doing. So. You know, for the Republican governors, Governor Ron DeSantis and 
Governor Abbott, DeSant Governor DeSantis signed his bill yesterday. Both of them talked about how well they ran their elections in 2020. But for them, this is, you know, the message has been, we just want to keep making improvements. We don't want to sit back and, and rest on our laurels. That's something that we've heard from Governor DeSantis. All right, Adam Brewster, thank you so much. Thanks, Tanya.